Hi, this is Catherine, and this is Taking Tea with Catherine. This is the February 2020 TBR. This is Jasmine Tea, which is a green tea that seems, for me at least, to be a very energetic tea and tastes good. So it's a good combination, and I just need the energy because I'm going to need a lot of energy next month if I'm going to get through all the books that I picked. And I don't actually plan to get through all of these books. I recognize that February is the shortest, shortish, shortest month of the year. Not only that, but even though it's okay, even though we have an extra day this year because of leap year, it's still short and you just never know if things are going to come up. So I don't usually read as many books as I picked out. So, and I'm fine with that. For me, I have a couple of books that I definitely am going to read. And then I have a selection of books that I will choose from as the month goes on. And if I leave someone behind, I will be fine with that. If you guys see any books that I'm showing you as possibles and say, well, this is one you really should read, please comment down below. And maybe I shall listen to your advice. Um, the reason I've picked most of these books, they most of them take place in London or England. And that's because I am going to be going back to England soon and would like to have it all fresh in the brain. It's kind of nice to, um, cause I've done the thing where I did more reading about a place after I came home and that I kind of feel sad that I wasn't able to see that place when I was there and you can't do it all, but I don't know. doesn't mean I won't be reading any books about England when I come back, but let's see how much I could do beforehand. I don't know. Sounds like a plan. Maybe. I mean, I don't want to overdo it because if I have a head full of knowledge about trivia and stuff about London, I will be an annoying travel companion. I can be quite annoying travel companion with all my little known facts and here is where kind of situations, but let's see if I can balance it out. So I'm going to show you the first two books that are definites, but these are books that I plan to and Aside from hitting a month where I don't read at all, I intend to read these books in February. This is for my book club, the first one. And I, okay, so the book club is at the end of the month and sometimes they change the dates, so it may not, we'll see. But I'm just going to plan that it's going to happen and it's not a long book, so I can read it definitely before the end of the month. I usually read my book club books way in advance. I'm nerdy that way. But this time I just waited till the last minute for me. And it doesn't take place in England either. It takes place in New York. And that's fine. But it's a classic and I have been planning to read a lot more classics this year. And so that's good. And that's The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. So many times, like Jane Eyre, I have, you know, gotten into conversations about this book and I almost feel like I've read it, but I know I haven't, so it's time to rectify that. And I hope I like it, and if I don't, it's not long enough to form a full-on hatred for, right? Not very long. So, we shall see. I still hope I like it. It's more fun to read a book and like it than to gripe about it, although sometimes a rant is also fun. I am that person. Okay, so I have been reading along with the Anna Green Gables challenge. Is it a challenge or just a read along? I don't know. It can be a challenge if you haven't read it before and find books about Prince Edward Island and a red haired girl growing up challenging. But <clears throat> so I read Anna Green Gables, loved it again in January. And I figure I'm going to love the next book, Anne of Avonlea. I don't know if it's Avonlea or Avonlea because I've heard it pronounced both ways by Elle Montgomery. And I don't know, growing up I always said Avonlea, but it seems Avonlea. Does it matter? Because I'm going to be reading it more than talking about it. Um, so Tia and all the books and the Curly Reader are the channels that have been, I guess, hosting this um, and also hosting the discussion on Goodreads. So if you're into that, then find them on Goodreads. I've been lazy about commenting on Goodreads that much about it because I just kept reading it. And then once I was done, I was done. So we'll see if I can keep up this month with Anne of Avonlea. This copy is an old, old copy. It's, 
think it was from one of those book orders that we used to do in school, like the Scholastic book orders or something. You'd order, if you ordered three items, you'd get a free poster or stickers or something. And my parents were pretty generous with us about that sort of thing. Most of the time, you know, they were, you know, weren't well off or anything, but they always saw that we had our books, which is a good thing for someone like me. This book, it says it was one ninety five. I think I can't really read it. It's all wrinkled on the side, unless it says one ninety six. It can't be one ninety six. That would be weird, right? But anyway, so this is the second book, and I hope I like it as much as Anne of Green Gables. And if not, I don't think I'll dislike it. So. So those are the two. I'm definitely reading it. Can't talk me out of it. And this is one, the, the Virago that I planned to read in January. Didn't make it. The Three Sisters. Let's try again. <clears throat> so now we're going to get into the Possibles. And yeah, this one is going to be, I'm going to laugh. I'm going to laugh when I say the author's name. Sorry. This is Mother London by Michael Moorcock. I'm good. I'm good. Mother London. So I found this, I think, in Argosy Bookshop in New York before they changed the $1 section to $3 and made me angry. So this is, I've had this for a while. It's an uncorrected proof. So hopefully I won't be too hung up on the uncorrected this. But apparently it takes place in London in an asylum or a mental clinic. I don't know. Maybe it's not an asylum. And they're they all talk to each other and they talk about, I guess, London. So that could be up my alley or not. I don't know. Have any of you read this one? Because I don't know anyone who's read this one. I probably do know, but not yet. Anyway, does that make sense? No. This book is um, London Bridges by Jane Stevenson, which I've had. Oh, I can't even. It's, it's mirrory in the front, so I can't really show it. It's too glary. But... Um, I've had this for a while. It's a detective novel, somewhat recent. I think the 90s. I found it, I think, because it says 75 cents in here in writing that looks like the library book sale from over a decade ago. So it's probably time. So I think with these two books, it's an either or. I'll read one of one or the other, and I won't choose London Bridges if I'm having a migraine, because that is glary. <clears throat> I don't know who chose that cover, but... It's not someone who wanted to touch up their makeup because you can't see yourself. You see like this gargoyle of yourself in there. Anyway, we shall see. If, if I really can't get to that book this year, I may unhaul it because I just don't like that mirror. I'm so sensitive. Now this book, I love the packaging of, and it is London, an illustrated literary companion compiled by Rosemary Gray. It's got Piccadilly Circus in the front, which kind of goes with my outside ambient noise that you probably hear very often because the cars go by and trucks and stuff and you could probably hear that so you know what it's a very trafficy area that I live in and I chose to have my library near the window on the ground floor so these are the hazards one must deal with but it is good when you're reading about a place like London that is full of traffic usually and so, I don't know, maybe they'll go together. And it's a cute, it's a cute little compilation of different writings about London. And I think that will definitely put me in the mood. I, I think I saw something from Dickens in here already. And people that I've never heard of. And lords and ladies. And so this could really be, I really want to read this one. So we're going to, by the way, the book I have on hold at the library coming to me is the next book, The Lord Peter Whimsey, that I started last month and I thought, let's keep going. So I can't show it to you yet because I don't have it yet, but I definitely plan on reading it. So the next few books are going to be mysteries of some sort or another. This is Murder in the Museum by John Rowland, British Library C Crime Classics. It's so hard to say crime classics without getting stuck. But I love the cover. I love all these covers, but this particular one that I got from Thrift Books ended up coming in in really good condition, unlike some of the others. But kind of makes me more nervous about messing it up, but you know what? We'll deal. I don't know much about it except that somebody dies in the museum and they think that it might be natural causes, but it's not. 
right? Because murder in the museum, right? British Museum, have been there a couple times, really liked it. One time I went when they had a special tea exhibition. Exhibit? Exhibition? I never know which word to use, but it was fantastic. And I've been there for so many other things, and so it'll be fun to read that. And this one, also with Rift Books, I should really take the sticker off. Let's see if I can do it in front of you guys. Without... Ooh, one take! Yes! Life is good. So, this is the next, I think the next one in my Agatha Christie Hercule Poirot series. Um, is it considered a series? I don't know. This is a Bantam kind of hardcover classic. Um, I have seen this on a few channels, this particular book design. I remember seeing uh, Mara from books like, whoa, I think she collects these. And so when I saw this for a very good price on Thrift Books, I picked it up. And yes, The Big Four by Agatha Christie. This little cover up here. Um, I'm pretty sure this one takes place in London and other places. So that should be on theme and in order. And we like that, don't we? And it's, it's a lightweight hardcover. Kind of, you know, these kind of covers are hardcover, but not hard covers. I don't know. Nice little old old schooly end papers and uh feels like no one's ever read this one before so you know it has that give or that lack of give so that'll be nice and I do plan to read Agatha Christie every month when I can I think I skipped it once the past few months probably October but I think I'm doing pretty well oh wait no I skipped October and November I think because of yeah but we're not looking back we're looking forward this is TBR so I have not read a Sherlock Holmes since October and I did think about doing a reread because so much of Sherlock Holmes takes place in London but instead I picked a pastiche one that I also bought either on thrift books or somewhere else online they sent me a library copy which I don't love but I think I will learn to just ignore and a friend of mine who's really into Sherlock Holmes recommended this to me and it is called Dust and Shadow by Lindsay Fay. It definitely takes place in London. It's got a whole Jack the Ripper theme which I'm not that big on but I've heard this is good so I think I will just find room for it and I just love to read mysteries. However I feel a little bit like I've been, I said this before, I've been ignoring or neglecting my history reading and it's not like I don't want to read history it's just that I've been overwhelming myself with other books and so I thought if I'm gonna pick a history book it doesn't have to necessarily be oh can I peel this thrift books label too let's see peeling with Catherine okay here we go here we go here it one shot again it's a good day okay this is um English history so the white horse king the life of Alfred the Great by Benjamin Merkel I think that it is not that long so it's a good amount of history without overwhelming. I do have some Churchill books that I bought. I have to show you guys I have hauls coming up. I They're gonna be a few of them because I can't keep them all in one place. I I lost it but anyway um, you know what I don't know that much about this time period so and I've heard really good things about Alpha the Great so it would be good to get started on this. I don't think there's any London in this book. Maybe not. But I'm fine with that because it doesn't have to be strictly London, does it? So it's a good way to read history without reading my big tomes. Even though I love the big tomes, um, I also am trying to fit in more books this time. And I'm already reading Dombey and Son, yes, still, and a Trollop. And I have other history books that I'm still kind of in the middle of, so I don't need to commit to any other big ones right now. So these, okay, well, I'm going to show you one more book that's very London. I don't know what I did with the cover. Um, it probably annoyed me because it was flappy and who knows what happened to it. Oh, such loud people. Um, but I know I started it and I don't know why I didn't keep going. Maybe, it's, maybe it wasn't that good. Who knows? I had been reading a book about walking in New York and not just like in Manhattan, but like in the boroughs. And so this book seems to have been to me in the same theme. But I guess I didn't get very far. I think this is around the same time I also was reading Walden and didn't finish that either. So maybe I was just going through a DNF phase. 
Anyway, this is This Other London by John Rogers. I did make it up to page 43. I checked. Looks like a TARDIS, right? Yeah. Doctor Who. Oh, I should read a Doctor Who book, but let's not. Um, and hopefully it'll be good. He also walks around and explores places that aren't right, right in the touristy parts of London. So that could be kind of cool. I see a picture of Hounslow Heath. That's not too far from the airport. So, uh, let's see. It was written, published 2013. I don't think I've had it that long, but I could be wrong. Time is just going so fast for me. It has a forward by Russell Brand. Okay. So <laughs> let's see if I can get back into this one. I don't know. Have you, any of you guys read this one? Very London-y. So the next two books, one of them touches on, I think, London, England, and the other one is just England, not London. But they're both books that I've bought recently that are pretty new, and I just really want to read them while they're still new. And that is The Hidden World of the Fox. Wait, why am I showing you that? By Adele Brand. I bought this recently online, and I am just itching to read this one. I'm itching again. I gotta stop saying itching, but yeah. And... Tom Cox, Ring the Hill. Ooh, Ring the Hill. I have been trying to read this since I got it, and I've had it for a couple months now, and I feel bad that I haven't read it, because why did I buy it new if I could have waited a few more months and got it? But I'm kind of glad I did, too, because I like buying things sometimes when they come out, when they're reasonable, and this was pretty reasonable. And what a beautiful cover. What a beautiful cover, right? So I love his books. I just love... He, he writes about nature. He writes about books. He writes about his cats. He writes about history. It's all the kind of things that I like and would like to be more into usually. I'm not that into his like exploring like different old, you know, legends and stuff like that. That bit, but you know, most of most of his books I really like. So I am hoping to get to this one in February, at least to start it in February. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. I, I uh, have other things that are coming up. I'm sure a lot of you who are into at all history or historical novels are waiting for the new Hilary Mantel book. That I think is coming out in March. I put a hold on it in the library. I have a feeling it's going to show up when I'm just getting ready to go on my flight and I won't be able to pick it up or something, or I'll be able to pick it up and I don't want to bring it with me because it's a big book overseas because I only... Why am I talking about March? This is February. But anyway, I I I guess the reason I why I'm saying that is because I've um I kinda had wanted to read Wolf Hall and Bring Up the Bodies in January and February, respectively. They also take place most mostly in um London. But I couldn't get to it. But I have read them before and they are amazing and I've been following whoever's been doing the Cromwell Thon. Is that what it's called? It's wonderful, it's wonderful. Great books gives me something to look forward to. So again, any of these books that you particularly recommend that you just absolutely, why have I not read this before kind of situation and not Great Gatsby because I'm definitely going to read that and Anne of Avonlea. But the other ones, if there's anything that you think that I will thank you for reading, then please comment down below. If you like hearing about my reading adventures in England, London, New York, wherever, feel free to subscribe. And this has been Catherine, taking tea with Catherine. Have a lovely February. Have a lovely tea and book filled day. Field. Filled. Day. Can't even finish anything. Have a lovely day. Bye.